Hello, welcome back. Today we want to talk about analysis of variance. So analysis of variance is often called ANOVA. We have one-way ANOVA, we have two-way ANOVA, we have between samples ANOVA and paired sample ANOVA. All right, so what we want to illustrate today is an example of a independent sample one-way ANOVA. So take a look at this. One-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA is, hypo is a hypothesis testing technique that is used to compare the means of three or more populations. Analysis of variance is usually abbreviated ANOVA all right, and here's the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis will be that the population means are equal. The alternative will be that at least one mean, one population mean, that is, is different from the others. And basically, what's going to happen, we are going to have a new set of formulas here. We're going to have a new way of looking at the degrees of freedom. We will use these with what's called the F distribution to determine critical values of F or the F statistic. So basically, what we have in ANOVAs, we have K is the number of samples. In a one-way ANOVA, we have what's called one factor. Two-way ANOVA will have two factors. So basically, the number of samples have to be greater than or equal to three. Now, we have a bunch of new formulas here as such. The most important ones are the sum of the squares between the samples and sum of the squares within the samples and the variance between the samples and the variance within the samples. Now, and we have these sums. Now, in this video, we're going to try a little different from the other videos. The other videos, we ran through the process with the formulas to solve them. Here, what we want to do, we want to start going to the SPSS software a little bit quicker. Because with these formulas, it becomes a little more cumbersome with ANOVA than with the other techniques. Just because the formulas are longer and they involve more steps. To calculate. But in general, our goal is to generate the LANOVA summary table, which looks like this. Now, what we want to do, we want to pretty much get the SPSS to generate this table for us. All right, so here's our example with the one way ANOVA. So look at this example. A medical researcher wants to determine whether there's a difference in the mean length of time it takes three types of pain relievers to provide relief from headache pain. Several headache sufferers are randomly selected and given one of the three medications. Each headache sufferer records the time in minutes it takes the medication to begin working. The results are shown in the table at alpha equals 0.01. Can you conclude that at least one mean time is different from the others? Assume that each population of relief times is normally distributed and the population variances are equal. Okay, so they're asking us to assume population variances are equal. Now this is important when you do an ANOVA. You want to assume that they are not significantly different. And there is a test called Levine's test of homogeneity of va variances. We can use that test to determine whether this condition holds, but they're asking us to assume that they're equal. So they're not significantly different for the test to be questionable.
that's what they're asking us to assume here. So they're sparing us the need to do that Levine's test of homogeneity of variance. But nonetheless, here's the data. We have sample sizes for each one of these groups. And what we need to do, we need to determine the critical value of f to establish the rejection region before we go to the SPSS. So we have alpha. We need to calculate the two degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom of the numerator and denominator, these things right here. Now, K is the number of categories. This problem had three categories because each category constitutes a type of medication. So K equals three, so K minus one is two. L is the total number of items within these three groups. So if we take the sum of this column, sum of this column, sum of this column, namely, well, we're going to get L1, L2, and L3. And what we need to do, we need to sum these up. When we sum these up, we're going to get what that capital L is. So you can see from this, it's 9 plus 4, which is going to be 13. So K is 13. So you can see K is 13. K minus 1 is 2, like we said. So with this an alpha being 0 0.01, we can proceed. But let's take a look again. Let's take a look again because I seem to have forgotten. So degrees of freedom of numerator is 2, degrees of freedom of denominator is 10. So 2 and 10 and alpha equals 0 0.01. Let's go to the table. Now this table is sideways here unfortunately. So this one was 10. The numerator was 2. But we needed alpha to be 0 0.01. So we need to go to a different page that has the appropriate alpha. Here, here it is, 0 0.01 alpha. So let's see. Degrees of freedom of the denominator was 10. And this one is 2. So at 10 and 2, you see, we have 7.56. So 7.56 should be the critical region, as it is indicated here by this F0. And the area in here, this blue area, is 0 0.01, because that was alpha. So now what we need to do, we need to calculate the test statistic. And as I said, we can do this by hand the way they did it. But let's just go straight to the SPSS this time. So I'll open the SPSS for you. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do, we're going to enter our data. So let me do that for you. So the way this data is going to be entered, we will enter the time it took for people to recover. That's going to be our first variable. And we're going to list all the values here together. Now, we need to separate them by the category of medication. So the first group, medication one, had four recovery times. So let me just label the first four one. 
And then from the fifth value, I'll start labeling them with a two. And the second group had five samples. So let me enter the number two five times for you. And let me enter the rest of the values. It was 16, 14, 21, 15, 19. And then we have four more. Those are in the third group, so those I'm going to label with a three. And let me enter them. Okay, now let's label them. So the first variable was recovery time. The second variable was categorized by the type of medication. And for this one, I will create labels. For recovery time, I will not create labels. I'll put that on scale level. Uh, this one, I'll put it on nominal level because the types of medication, their names are nominal. So the first value, we'll call that medication one. Oh, I think I, let me cancel this one. Let me do it over. I hit the exclamation mark instead of the number one or I held the shift key down. So let me put it back. Okay. This one will be medication two. And then we have medication three. There we go. So now we should have it labeled. Very nice. All right, now we're ready to proceed with our test. So what we want to do, want to go to Analyze, Compare Means, One Way ANOVA. Okay, dependent variable is the recovery time. The medication goes in as factor. This is one factor because it's a one way ANOVA. Let's just take a look at options. We can now we can get the descriptive statistics. We can get fixed and random effects, homogeneity of variance. We talked about that. That's the Levine's test of homogeneity of variance. Brown Foresight and Welch. Let's just get descriptives and homogeneity of variance, although they said to assume that the variances were equal or not significantly different. So let's continue. Let's get our test. All right, here we go. Let me maximize this. So there we go. We have the descriptive statistics, the degrees of freedom of numerator, degrees of freedom of denominator, and here's the ANOVA table. Now, what we want from this table we want this, this is our test statistic. It is 1.502. And with a left statistic of 1.502, if you recall, our critical value was 7.53. This one is less than 7.53. So that puts us it's going to put us in the unshaded region. If we're in the unshaded region, 
we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we have to go back to our null and alternative hypothesis and see which one was the claim. But we were asked, we were asked to test whether we could conclude one mean time is different from the others. So in an ANOVA, the alternative hypothesis is that one mean test is different from the other. So our claim was the alternative hypothesis. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. So that means there is not sufficient evidence to support our claim. But let's take a look. Let's take a look back at what we had before. Let's minimize this. Yeah, basically what they have is what we said. They calculated an F statistic. Their F statistic was this thing, which is the same thing the SPSS showed us. So they're in the unshaded region. They are failing to reject the null hypothesis. And because the alternative was the claim, there's not sufficient evidence at the 1% level to conclude there is a difference in mean length of time it takes the three pain relievers to provide relief from headache pain. And just recall that in this problem, the alternative was our claim, not the null, because they they were basically claiming that well, we were testing whether there was a difference between these. But they told us here, at alpha equals 0 0.01, can you conclude that at least one mean time is different from the others? So if you're testing for a difference between the means, your claim is the alternative. So pretty much that's it. You can contrast this with the SPSS output. We can take a look at the SPSS. Let's take a look at the, the output file is here. And you see this table matches what they had. So that's pretty much how you do a one-way ANOVA between samples with SPSS.